whenever you're ready, Dr. Hirsch. Thank you. Uh, you're mute. mute. Okay. You were mute. Can you so. hear me? Yeah. Yes. Now we can. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. We, we can hear you. Yeah. We, we're hearing you. Okay. So, Thank you. first of all, huh? you're hearing me. Very good. So thank you very much for the invitation for this very interesting series of uh, lectures devoted to the archaeology of uh, uh, Central Asia. And uh, today I am going to speak about uh, uh, some uh, recent uh, materials about the city in uh, Sogdiana. First of all, the best known city of Sogdiana, Panjakent, located in uh, Tajikistan. So this is the map of the, of uh, uh, Central Asia, and Sogdiana is. Uh, uh, can you hear? See the, uh, the uh, mouse. Well, let's hope you can. So it is located in the territory of present-day Tajik uh, Uz Uzbekistan, uh, parts of Tajikistan, and parts of. Uh, Turkmenistan on Amudarya, uh, on the middle Amudarya river. And uh, uh, so the people from Sogdiana, they were a great uh, developers of culture, cultural triggers, uh, influencers in modern, uh, uh, in modern uh, jargon, uh, uh, who were very active on the roads of so-called Silk Road, uh, from the first centuries of common era until uh, eighth or ninth, or sometimes even tenth or eleventh uh, uh, century. And uh, Sogdians uh, were traders, they were, uh, uh, they developed their own culture in close contact with India, China, Near East, uh, Medi Mediterranean, uh, steppe regions, and so on. And this culture presupposed that Sogdian merchants, Sogdian rich people were, uh, were a kind of a city folk. And in fact, the excavations which were done uh, after the World War II in the various parts of Sogdiana uh, showed that uh, Sogdians had their own uh, cities. Uh, so these cities are uh, well known. So they are in Samarkand, Sogd, in uh, Samarkand itself, Afrasiab, and in Western Sogdiana, the best studies sites there probably is Paikand, and in Kashkadarya in Southern Sogd, like Kirkurgan or uh, Kaleza Hakimaran, and so on. So these cities have been studied. But of course, the best studied city in Sogdiana is Panjakand. And what I'm going to speak about today is mostly. Uh, Panjakant. Oh, sorry. Uh, so Sogdiana, in fact, the name is not completely clear. Uh, today, it sounds like Iranian and in a, a modern Tajik language, uh, the, and even in, medi in medieval Persian sources, the word surd or churd means something like a, a, a uh, means uh, something uh, like a flat land rich in water. And in fact, this description fits very well the fertile uh, valleys of Zarafshan and Kashkadarya River in Sogdiana, which are really flat and they are rich in water. So, for example, the Kariz or Kanat technique was very little used in uh, Sogdiana and until uh, today the water is enough in the uh, oasis and if you fly above in the oasis and you manage to make a photo because photos from the plane are not allowed in uh, Central Asian republics, you can see here and there small hills and these small hills are uh, tepe, tipa signify their uh, ancient. So on this photo which I made from a uh, Plain. There is a very small tipa somewhere to the north of Samarkand, but the others are really huge, and they have been excavated. Uh, so the excavations of Samarkand, uh, of Russia, started just a few years after the uh, Russian conquest of uh, uh, 
of uh, Turkestan, and they are continuing till today. They were rapidly developing after the World War II and also after the collapse of the Soviet Union, when not only Soviet archaeologists, but also Western archaeologists, and now also Chinese, Japanese archaeologists, uh, join uh, the international teams which investigate uh, uh, so, uh, cities of Central Asia. So the largest among them is, of course, Afrasiab. Afrasiab is the uh, site of ancient Samarkand, located somewhat to the north of the present day uh, city center of triangular shape uh, of uh, very huge dimensions, more than 200 hectares. So the colleagues from the French mission can uh, correct me. And Afrasiab is a site with very long history of development. So it ended in early 13th century in uh, 12, uh, 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 20 with the conquest of uh, Chinggis Khan when uh, uh, all the population from uh, Afrasia from Memphis in Samarkand were cleaned and then they resettled to the north of uh, the site. The beginning is at least uh, a cabinet period or even earlier. So it is very rich in cultural strata. And this is an advantage and also disadvantage of this site because it is always uh, difficult to get to the uh, strata to the lawyers that predate uh, uh, the latest occupation, the Karahanid and Samanid to, to extent occupation. So, but since the excavation in Samarkand uh, are have a very long history and were done by different teams on a rather large scale, also the site itself is uh, utmost huge, uh, uh, much material have been collected. Uh, uh, Paikan, that site in the western Sogdiana, not far from uh, uh, Bukhara, have been excavated most intensively during the last uh, 40 years uh, uh, by uh, uh, Russian and Uzbek team. And uh, so it comprises of the citadel, it is on the background, then it is Sharistan or city proper one and city proper two, closer to us. And in this uh, uh, in the Shahristan one uh, reach uh, and those on the citadel, there are rich spreads of the developed Sogdian culture of fifth to eighth uh, centuries. Hisarak is a site located very high in the mountains of Tajikistan on the very eastern part of uh, Sogdiana. It has been excavated by uh, um, Yusuf Yakubov and Boris Stavisky in 80s and uh, 1998 for just a limited scale. And since 2010, Panjak and Expedition, so our expedition uh, started working here at Hisarak and uh, many interesting results have been uh, uh, collected here. So it is a highland site. It uh, comprises of the Sharistan, which is the main flat area here and three citadels. Uh, so-called citadels uh, on the uh, uh, on the left upper hand of the uh, site. Uh, no. And also the site of Sanjar Shah, I will mention it here uh, several times. It is quite close to Panjakant, like 12 kilometers to the east of the end of ancient Panjakant. It comprises of around, uh, of around tower on the background and about six hectares of uh, settlement, which was unfortunately leveled in 60s during the irrigation uh, campaigns, but still in many places there are solid ruins of uh, this site, which was abandoned about ninth century, have been excavated. And they show very close relation to the Sogans, uh, to the uh, Panjakant uh, materials. And here and there, I will quote some uh, items from Sanjar Shah from the excavations of my friends, uh, 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 Michael Shankar and Sharov Kurbanov. Uh, uh, they are, uh, all the materials can be uh, viewed at the site of the uh, Society for Exploration Eurasia, which sponsors these excavations for many years. Uh, 
uh, now and so Anch and Penji can and I will not go from here uh, much. Uh, today is the best studied uh, sovereign city. So you see that uh, almost a half or maybe more than a half of the site have been excavated by now. It couldn't happen in uh, one moment and the excavations of Panja Kanto, the first uh, investigations were before World War II and uh, since uh, 1946 uh, and 1947, there are permanent excavations in Panja Kanto, they were interrupt interrupted only in the last year because of the quarantine uh, uh, conditions. But in this year, so in one month or so, we hope to resume our excavations. Uh, so uh, this is the location of Panjakan. So we are looking to the east, to the mountainous side of Zarafshan Wallace. Panjakan is located not far from, uh, uh, from, from the place where Zarafshan leaves the mountains and comes to the lowland area. So it's not... Sorry? So can you hear me? No, we, we can hear you, but someone has uh, uh, their microphone on. I'm trying to mute it. We, we can hear you very well. So I, I continue that. Uh, okay, yes, so Thanks. it is on the... Uh, on the left head bank of Zerafshan uh, River on the terrace of Zerafshan. So it's elevated as compared to the modern city and comprises of the Sharistan. So the city itself, Citadel and some other parts from it. Sanjar Shah is not far from there at the confluence of Magian River, one of the tributaries of Zerafshan and Zerafshan proper. So to the east, there are mountains, there are some different uh, living conditions, a more poor uh, uh, country, and to the west, so 60 kilometers is Samarkand, the capital of Sogdiana. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, this is the location of Panjik, and in, in fact, it is the easternmost uh, 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 town of uh, Sogdiana proper. Uh, so this is an aerial photo of uh, uh, 1970s. We will return uh, there later. And so we see that on the western side of the city, there is a citadel, the main stronghold and the palace. To the north of it, there is a Kainar Spring where was a sixth century uh, uh, palace. And uh, the, to the south, there, is, um, there are some uh, villas, some uh, uh, cottage houses, uh, suburbs, and to the south of it is necropolis. In the center of Sharistan itself, just to the north of inscription Sharistan, we see uh, two huge temples which form the center of the uh, city line. Uh, the uh, initial area of the site, which was became a city in fifth century uh, of common era, was around eight hectares. So, uh, but in the sixth century, a uh, large appendix was added to the on the eastern side, and then it and uh, and the area today estimates almost thirteen hectares. Uh, the city the city lived from fifth to the uh, to seven sixties of a uh, common era. Uh, we will return to the story of its last decades later. So the, if this is the best studied Sogdian uh, city, a kind of etalon uh, reference uh, Sogdian city, which was uh, excavated by a, a large group of scholars from uh, Leningrad, St. Petersburg, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and many other countries. The first leader of expedition was Alexander Yurievich Jakubovsky. After him for one year was Mikhail Mikhailovich Dyakonov, then for 20 or so years, Alexander Alexander Markovich Belenitsky. Uh, they were all uh, not uh, archaeologists by their primary uh, research field, but rather, as it used to say in Russia, was the or Orientalists. And so their interest was a combination of archaeology with written sources uh, to establish a historical picture. Uh, the most uh, famous uh, leader of Panjakant excavations was Boris Ilyich Marshak, uh, who 
who is known well in the West for his uh, publications, for his book, Leg uh, book Legends, Tales and Fables from Ancient Saudiana in particular, and who worked intensively on various items of Oriental art, archaeology, uh, history, on theoretics, on, uh, um, uh, on pottery, on many other things and was really a brilliant scholar. I'm really happy that I learned, managed to learn much from him. And in uh, uh, two, uh, 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 and in uh, 2006, uh, during the excavations, during checking of the uh, uh, archa architectural uh, 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 sketches, he felt bad and uh, died, uh, died during the excavations and is buried next to the site of ancient Panja camp. And so his uh, uh, grave there becomes like in a Central Asian custom, uh, um, a kind of place of pilgrimage also. The people who pass by, they uh, used to read Fatiha uh, um, to, to um, and uh, to pray at uh, the, his grave. So after a year or uh, two, the leadership of the expedition was given to my friend Sharov Kurbana from Tajik side and the friend of Sharov Kurbana, Mr. Lurkia from the uh, Russian side. And in the last 10 years, we are directing the excavations. And what I'm going to tell in the larger part of this lecture are the results of our uh, joint excavations, of course, with the help of a great team of archeologists, of architects, of uh, uh, conservators, of uh, drawers persons, of students, and uh, many other of, uh, school children of Panjikan who used to uh, make a, um, um, uh, uh, earthwork, uh, earthwork to dig. Uh, so it is a result, of course, of a very large uh, uh, um, uh, joint activity of uh, uh, many people. So just a few words about Panjikan altogether. What is it? Uh, so it comprises of Necropolis uh, to the south. It is the so-called Nous, uh, so-called Nausis, so a small uh, uh, superterran, uh, 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 superterran mausolea where the so-called ossuaries, the uh, chests for bones, were collected. There were also uh, deposits of bones on the floor of uh, of. Um, uh, of Nausis. Next to it, in many places, there were so-called suburbs, like outdoor houses. It is not really clear, are they houses of, uh, of, um, uh, 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 of villagers living outside the city, or maybe a summer uh, houses of the city folk, uh, uh, a kind of um, suburban life. It's not really clear, but uh, in most cases, it is evident that the construction, the architecture here was not uh, really very good. So you see that all the, uh, there are no straight lines of the uh, walls and only one very primitive wall painting has been found here. The center of the city, as I told, are two temples that were uh, erected in fifth century and continued to be in use until 722, until the time when uh, Panjakant was captured by Muslim forces. Uh, and Devasti, the last independent ruler of Panjakant, had to flee to the uh, mountains where he was captured near the Mount Moog and where his archive was discovered in 1932-1933, which became the main uh, uh, the most important discovery of Soviet documents in uh, um, in uh, in Soviet uh, Central Asia, and which became a momentum for uh, for studying Panjakan because it was clear that uh, these documents, many of these documents, were composed in Panjakan, and Devastish himself was the ruler of Panjakan. So many, many years before that, in fifth century, these two temples comprising of the main sanctuary and, uh, and uh, 
temenos were constructed. So usually it's considered that there are two temples, but later on we will see that also and there was also another small third temple to north of to the north of them. So a yard of temenos, a sanctuary, and later chapels added in various sites. So there are six to eight uh, straits of development of uh, the temples, which are mostly excavated by late. Uh, Valentin, Škoda, and many were richly decorated with murals, including very early mural, murals, 5th, 6th uh, century, and uh, clay sculpture, uh, clay bas uh, sculpture with images of God, so marine life, and so on. Uh, now, the citadel, which is located to the west of the main city on the separate uh, hill, the main stronghold was excavated earlier and later uh, uh, Abdullah Isakov excavated a palace, palace of, of Devashish himself to the east of it. So it was a relatively significant, the most significant in Panjakan uh, as a palace, but not as big as palace as Shahristan, for example, and elements of very beautiful murals and uh, uh, carved wood have been discovered there. So this is the only place where we see some political items in the, uh, in the murals, um, uh, which are made on blue background. Blue background is considered, was considered one of the most expensive. Then it was produced from lapis lazuri. Lapis lazuri was found only in uh, Badakhshan at uh, that uh, period. Uh, and you see very elegant and thin lines. Uh, to, the, uh, to the north of it, just to the, uh, 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 below the photo you have at the bottom, there, was, there is a spring, a spring with uh, sweet water, which is venerated today. It's called Kainar Spring. And not far from it, a palace of sixth century have been excavated with several uh, painted rooms. So the most famous painting from there is this hunting scene of sixth century. And in the other places, there were the murals with uh, tulips and uh, poppies in, uh, uh, in a more primitive design. And uh, these uh, tulips and poppies were first discovered in 1980s and in 2000. 11 to 2013, we, uh, we continue to excavate this uh, painting with uh, poppies and uh, tulips. So now we go to the main city. This is a reconstruction of it my, made by late Boris Marshak and his uh, Japanese uh, colleagues. Uh, how could it uh, look like at that time? So you can recognize the citadel, the uh, temple area and the households and so on. And so this is the axonometry of the largest household in Panjakan, the one of the very few that possessed an inner uh, yard and many rooms here. So at the bottom of the slide, there is an entrance, there is so-called Ivan uh, or portico, small portico at the entrance. Sometimes they were decorated. So actually the main, the most important feature of Panjakan for which we know it today, for which we know we wish we can um, uh, enjoy in the Hermitage Museum or in the museums of Tajikistan are uh, our mural paintings. So the mural paintings on Ivans are rather small, moderately uh, done, but sometimes are narrative. Most often there are like vases or uh, flowers or uh, uh, floral designs and uh, so on. A special case of uh, the uh, rooms which are found in many but not in all households in Panjak and the so-called chapels. So there are small rooms with a decorated uh, 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 fire niche attached to the wall with semicolons and so on. They're usually not very big, like four and six uh, meters and have a very unitary uh, uh, design. And uh, as I used to argue in 2014, these rooms are not 
kind of uh, home sanctuaries or fire god or whatever, but rather warm uh, winter rooms that were need needed in Panja Canton, especially in the mountain areas with their uh, cold uh, uh, climate, because this, uh, uh, the, the, this type of rooms are more characteristic for the uh, mountain than for Panjakant proper, and they are not attested uh, in strict sense, for example, in Samar country or in other places on, in Lowlands of Guyana. And the most important rooms of the rich houses were the square reception halls, which were decorated with wood carvings and with paintings. So usually they had an entrance in, in, in the center of one room opposite the entrance, there was an image of gods. The walls can be decorated in various uh, ways and it's ceiling when it is preserved and what is preserved are only, uh, are only uh, charcoal, uh, only ashes, uh, uh, and it is a very hard work for conservators to uh, make them uh, legible again. They were painted at some moment, but the paint there uh, is uh, uh, completely uh, lost. So at some respect, we should be grateful to Arabs who conquered uh, Panjikant in 722 and burned almost a half of the city. Uh, so that we know something about wood carvings as well. Uh, so the room was decorated with wood carvings, with wooden caryatids, sometimes very complicated uh, uh, models of ceilings can be uh, reconstructed. Opposite the entrance, there's an image of God or gods and the other uh, uh, walls in ideal condition can uh, make a long narrative uh, painting uh, in several streets. Uh, these, uh, uh, these are karyatids and depictions of karyatids on different media from Panjikant and from uh, and from Sharistan to the north in Ustrushana and from uh, Samarkand or Osor Soris as well. And so the paintings comprised of the image of God or the images of gods in the niche or the painted imitation of the niche. So they were most venerated. Sometimes there were adorants next to it. So this is typical, not only for Panjakant of the upper painting comes from Afrasia, from Samarkand, the excavations of Albaum. Uh, so there could be also de uh, depictions of uh, of lines of gods, like on the reconstruction from Panjikan. The adoration scenes, not also not only Panjikan, but also in from Paikan, for example. Processions, many hunting scenes, also from various places, not only uh, Panjikan. Uh, banquet scenes. Uh, in, more, in some cases, they are uh, separate banking, uh, banking scenes like the red painting from Panjikant in Dushanbe Museum. Sometimes they are part of a narrative plot like a blue painting from Sharistan, from Ustrushana uh, in the Hermitage now. And battle scenes, battle scenes uh, are also, as a rule, part of uh, narratives, sometimes only some elements of the narrative, some elements of the uh, fighting scene is visible. Uh, the others cannot be reconstructed with any surety. And uh, depictions of fables, uh, fairy tales, or um, other uh, um, migratory subjects, which were usually occupied, which usually occupied the lower part of the the lower part, part of the um, uh, imagery of the walls, and of course the main narrative paintings could occupy the main uh, layers. So they followed one by one in uh, a model somewhat similar to uh, modern uh, comic strips. This is the most famous and the most legible painting of all the uh, 
so-called blue hole where the first large tire from the low from below showed the res gesture of uh, uh, Rustam, the main hero of Iranian uh, epics. Uh, narrative murals are also known from Sharistan, from Kalaikah Kaha, from Ustrushana to the northeast of, of uh, Sogdiana, but they are somewhat later. And so now, with uh, ha having made this maybe too long introduction, I will uh, uh, discuss some of the materials of the recent years of excavations of Panjakan, mostly focusing on the uh, organization of the city, of city life, of the chronology of the city, uh, and so on. So not so much about murals, not so much about pottery. You are very lucky I'm not speaking about pottery today but rather about uh, architectural uh, uh, and planigraphic items. So we will speak about earlier strata on the northern slope of the citadel on the northeastern edge extremity of the Sharistan, on the northern wall of the city, on the third minor palace, a model, modular block in Panjakan, maybe elusive modular block, a minor square and uh, my beloved feature of households, ramps and staircases, which led to the upper floor. So this is again the picture of Panjakan Citadel, the uppermost part of the main stronghold. In front of it, there is the palace of Devastich and the fresh excavations we, you can see to the uh, right of it are the, is the cross section of the um, uh, uh, wall of uh, northern wall of the citadel. And uh, the place where the trees grow is the Kainar Spring with sweet water and where the palace of sixth century was uh, located. Uh, so this is an image of the cross section. You see that it is more than 20 meters, uh, almost 20 meters uh, uh, deep. So of course there is a slope. Uh, on the surface and 30 meters long, but in no place did we find uh, uh, the uh, virgin soil. So everywhere we are digging, we are digging inside the uh, uh, cultural deposits. Uh, sometimes it's really hard. So during this cross section, we suddenly uh, met a, uh, an asphalted road and we had to dig through the asphalt, which was uh, very hard, but with our uh, Terminator workers, it was uh, easier. And interestingly enough, the most archaic uh, elements we find here are at the top, room 26 and room 22. So this is a pottery from the Northern Slope, which shows the so-called early Panjakan, uh, Panjakand uh, 1 to 5, so it is 5th to 6th century according to uh, Marshak's uh, uh, chrono chronology. It is characterized by a pot-like shapes, by, by engobes, uh, uh, slip on the surface, uh, uh, and specific shapes not really very rich. And uh, on the uh, corridor, which is room uh, 26 here, so it is a, a defensive corridor. You see here loopholes in the initial wall of the city. And according to many observations, it is the earliest thing which we discovered here, including a um, uh, very archaic uh, base of, uh, uh, um, of a um, goblet which predates uh, normal, uh, 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 normal pottery from Panjakant, which as I told you, starts in the fifth century. So quite probably we are here in the earliest, in the very beginning of Panjakant. So some incidental finds of uh, this uh, pottery and construction have been documented by Grigory Semyonov, who wrote a long uh, dissertation on the fortifications of Panjakant. And above it, at room 22, we found a mural. So the mural looks very super archaic uh, with uh, uh, 
donors made in very primitive colors and architectonic design above it. In the middle, there are elements of art. So maybe there was a depiction of God or goddess. Uh, we uh, do not know, but it is very early, but not as early as the um, as uh, the uh, fortification corridor with loopholes, because between uh, that period and this period, there was a little fire and another fire was above it. Probably it corresponds to the fire of 722, but we are not sure about it. But we are more sure when we go to the sector uh, 30 on the northwestern fringe of Sharistan around here is the view before excavations. After 2015, we are not allowed to use drones uh, uh, anymore in Tajikistan. So all aerial photos are uh, quite old. So this is plan of sector 30. Uh, the blue one is a house after 722, probably of which very little survived. So it's very close to the surface. The red one is a burnt house in the fire of 722. So there were like 10 coins, which all predating 722. And an important feature is that this house was not cleaned after the fire. So everything remained there. And to the uh, left, we have the uh, house of the last dates of uh, finance. So this is a moderate, small size, one story household, which was burned in 722. So there are very many traces of fire everywhere and that's lost on the place where uh, it, um, uh, where it is. It stands almost immediately on the virgin soil so this part of the uh, site is not rich in loss, and so probably at every reconstruction, all the materials of the previous inhabitants were collected to make new uh, bricks uh, for walls. Uh, so it is unlike the center of the uh, uh, of the site where. Lewis was abundant, uh, abund uh, abundant and uh, uh, the uh, constructions were located one above another. Uh, so from the burned, uh, uh, for, 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 from the burned layer, we excavated a huge amount of pottery. It also corresponds to the date before 722. So we are pretty sure that this fire is a part of a large fire that occupied uh, almost half of the city in uh, uh, 722. And these are examples of these pottery. So more than 50 complete, uh, um, uh, complete diagnostic forms and also many fragments as well. So it is, um, unique uh, one period large collection of pottery which deserves a special study. And uh, the household which is to the west of it, it has the materials of 750s and 760s. It has an unusual shape. So you see that the outer wall where a brush is placed, it has a semicircular uh, shape. Yes, you see it here at the top uh, left. So it's also a small house. The, uh, the rooms of this house were attached to the rooms of the uh, burned, burned house. So it is obviously later, uh, first of all, because of its materials, because of uh, later pottery here, and because of Abbasid uh, copper coins of 750s, 760s. So in Panjak and altogether, we don't have coins after 770 uh, AD. On the last uh, two decades, they are almost exclusively uh, uh, Muslim coins, standard Muslim uh, files, copper. Uh, uh, and uh, after 722, after the fire, of which I'm told much and will tell you more uh, uh, today, uh, the city was abandoned for some uh, two decades, and in 740s and 738, 
at least it was re-inhabited again. Many houses were recultivated, rebuilt, and the most magnificent wall paintings belonged to this period. So when Panjakent was formerly uh, part of caliphate, when it was under uh, Muslim rule by the Muslims, the uh, um, Nasser ibn Sayyar, the famous governor of Samarkand, he did not really intervene in the, into the deeds of uh, his subjects of Sogdians. So there were Arab garrisons at the citadel, in spite of the place of the, uh, of the palace. The main temples did not function anymore, but in the houses, the people continued to make beautiful houses, to make beautiful paintings, to show uh, local gods, to show uh, uh, veneration scenes, uh, and so on. In 750s, the culture changes. We don't, we have this false, this uh, Islamic coins. We don't have uh, new murals anymore. In some few cases, they are recognized uh, um, uh, uh, rec uh, rec uh, recognize feature that some uh, paintings were deliberately destroyed, their faces were cut, and so on. And after seven, six, seven, around 770, all the people completely removed from the uh, city to another site. It is another project which we started uh, uh, five years ago, Firuz Aminov is doing it to excavate Panjakent of the pre-Mongol period, so it is located on the lower uh, terrace, and it also shows quite a uh, uh, well-done, uh, uh, developed life of uh, the pre-Mongol Central Asia of Samanid and Karahanid period with much uh, glazed pottery, uh, Big brick architecture, uh, much uh, uh, glass, and so on, and so on. So the people finally left the city, uh, not after some disaster or uh, um, catastrophe, but probably voluntarily to settle on in a more comfortable places. And so the main, uh, the, the the most unusual feature which we met here in 2019 is a rounded extremity of a city. So it is, the wall is not, it doesn't look like a real city wall. Probably it was rebuilt uh, totally, but its shape was maybe influenced, maybe influenced by a round tower, which could be located here in earlier periods. At, at the moment, we don't know that and at the moment, I don't see any method to learn about it more. It is just remaining of a guess. In any, in any case, it's quite an unusual situation than the uh, outer wall has not a straight uh, 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 orientation, but is kind of uh, rounded. And now we go slightly to the east of it, to the sector. Uh, 11, uh, the, uh, 11 East, uh, which is located to the north of the two, of two main uh, temples. So uh, the excavations here, uh, uh, so it's located at top of Northern Cliff of ancient site to the north of temple too. So it is supervised by myself. So in this case about 11 East, I'm not parasitizing on some other archaeologists' uh, data, but I used to do it with my own poo. Uh, and so they are still ongoing. 26 rooms have been excavated by now. And uh, it, uh, uh, it demonstrates several quite interesting uh, elements of um, the cityscape. So there is northern wall made in yellow, uh, a very the household similar to be to each other, which are marked R to D. The house D is not, and the house C and house D are not finished as yet. And yet we hope to finish it uh, soon. And uh, the street to the south, which is ordinary street, I would say, and the third temple on the uh, western end. 
So this is a cross section and the view of uh, um, city wall. Usually it has been considered, let me go back to two slides, that the northern wall either did not exist or it fell down from the cliff in the course of time. Uh, with our excavations of, for, uh, of the last uh, uh, decade, it becomes clear that it is not the case. So there was a wall, there was a first uh, uh, line of the wall with a scarp with a corridor leading outside. There was an additional wall attached to it. From the additional wall, we find the portrait of six to early seventh century, not uh, later and the main uh, wall was earlier and it also had loopholes so which are better visible from the inside of the um, uh, temple area these loopholes survive these are the feature of early panjakant and not of the later panjakant uh, so when we uh, started excavating on the uh, uh, on the eastern side of the of this area, we noticed room eight, a rather small room and a rather flat surface to the east of it, which looked like an open yard. Uh, when we started excavating it, we uh, we noticed some wall paintings, harmonica frieze, and also a part of relatively humble depiction of goddess Nanaya. So we are also only legs of her survive, but we are pretty sure because she sits on the lion. It is her vahana, it is her riding animal, nobody else. And because she is the most popular uh, goddess in Sogiana. So when we see depiction of a god, there is a good chance that she is uh, 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 Nanaya the goddess of Mesopotamia origin, who was worshipped by Sogdians, by Bactrians, by Horasmians, by um, uh, Armenians, uh, by Parthians, uh, and who be, is the most popular goddess in uh, Sogdiana. Uh, and to the uh, uh, east of it, we started excavating this slowland thing and what we found here were traces of wall painting and these two good stone column bases, which are located just the two sides at the entrance to the room eight, which has been uh, uh, recultivated and filled with soil uh, by now. So uh, this appears to be a portico and Ivan uh, the um, uh, of the uh, temple. It was also painted. Paintings did not survive as good as uh, stone uh, column bases, but we recognize a harmonica frieze and probably a depiction of a, um, of a guardian deity who holds sword in his hand. The style of this. Uh, of this guardian deity is clearly late Panjakan, 7th to 8th century. The excavations continued in 2019. And so a temple yard was discovered with a ramp leading to the, uh, to the portico and also a portico in a van to the uh, uh, north of it. So it's a side Ivan. This is another view of the same, and this is a cross section. And in the cross section, maybe it's not easy to uh, 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 to see, but in many places we observe the traces of fire on the floor. So there are two floors: floor below fire and floor above fire. And as our usual usual hypothesis uh, goes. Um, uh, what is below fire is before 722, what is above fire is after 722. And the coin finds, which are not so numerous here in this place, seem to corroborate our hypothesis. And indeed, uh, 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 under the fire level, we don't see the coins after 722. Uh, the pottery 
concludes uh, the same half above the floor above the bird surface we have uh, these for example this uh, cup with stamp which appears in samarkand in early 8th century but in panjakan is an unknown before 7 uh, 22. Well, the pottery under the burnt level is uh, somewhat earlier, is somewhat earlier. Uh, so one of the best uh, finds from there, this large jar with the, mm, mm, with the mouse shaped as a bowl and some beads and tokens which can be explained as votives. The upper one is probably a piece of uh, jade, which, uh, which was very expensive of that period as today as well. Uh, so this, uh, uh, this temple, as we see it now, the excavations is not complete and it's uh, 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 southern side and its eastern side, it shows parallel to a number of other temples, uh, Jartepa temple between, uh, in rural area between Samarkand and Panjikant is most close here, but also Yarkorgan temple, uh, uh, the early, uh, uh, the early uh, development of the big temple too in Panjikant and even Bardeneshande in uh, path and period Zagros shows the same scene. So the sanctuary and in front of it, it is a portico with columns, two to four or sometimes even more columns I hear. And to the south of it is a yard, is Temenos, which has a lower surface. Um, so now we have two large temples and to the north of it, the smaller temple. And the interesting feature is that in the big fat temples, we don't have evidence of worship after 722, after the Arab conquest. But in this third small temple, we do have evidence of a religious life in 740s, but not later. This is, I think, an important argument in the question of Islamization of, so, of Central Asia. And to the west of it, there is a set of somewhat modern, um, something similar to modular houses. So this house, A, B, C, C, and probably D, comprise of two vaulted rooms of kitchen, of elevation to the upper floor, I will return to it later, entrance corridor, and all the, uh, all the material from floors is not earlier than 740, is not later than 740s. So these are examples of a vaulted room of kitchen, you see a fireplace. Uh, here they were also vaulted, but not as long. Um, staircase and entrance corridor so at the end of the slide it is entrance to the street and cross sections which show their uh, development so these houses stand on some architecture which is uh, uh, which is earlier and which does not correspond to the planning of the uh, upper horizon as we know it today. There were some rare coins found, for example, the so coin of so-called Pargar. Nobody knows how to read it uh, clearly. But I, uh, this is, I think, the first case of uh, excavation of these coins from stratified uh, area. Uh, so what, uh, so uh, this uh, houses look like a modular structure. So they have the same shape. And uh, in Panjakand, in fact, we have some houses which have the similar organization, but they are located uh, in different sites of the, of the city in not so rich uh, uh, blocks. And they don't, for, and they do not uh, show a, a, a line of similar uh, structures. We are more, uh, 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 we have more parallels when we look to the east, when we look to uh, Paikant, uh, the houses at Sharistan 1, and at Tokkala in Horezm, which also shows a very similar, the very 
uh, almost identical houses. Of course, here and there, there are one floor houses. They didn't have upper floor as in Panjakant we do, but still they show these modular structures. The modular structures are also visible in uh, Gardani Hisar in the mountains of Zerakshan Valley and in Kalai Kahkaha in Ustrushana. But what is uh, suspicious here uh, to call it modular places? First of all, the size of the houses is different. So the house A is two times bigger than house C so far we can reconstruct it. Between the uh, rooms of different houses, they are marked in blue, there have been passages which were uh, uh, closed later so initially there was a, a passage like uh, the one on the photo but later it was covered it was filled with a brick wall and uh, among the ramps among the elevators one is initial and two others seem to be secondary so now it looks like for me that initially it was one structure which was later divided in rather approximate way into three rather moderate houses. So even house A, which is richer than others, it is also relatively small as compared to many others in Panjakan, and none of them has any traces of decoration of um, murals, whatever. And uh, now uh, uh, just briefly about a square which was found in sector 26 North. Uh, which is also an unusual feature. So in the last years, we excavated a house, which we call house of Tish Farm, because a, uh, a pebble with Sogdian inscriptions was discovered here, and I read it as Tish Farm, son of Vahushvandi. So it's house of Tish Farm. Of course, it's very, uh, um, um, uh, it's not um, exact denomination a relatively big house but also without murals some uh, coin hoards have been found here some interesting uh, metal objects have been found here so everything has been uh, published and the interesting feature is a street which is uh, is a square which is located at crossing of uh, three streets so Panjakent was extremely dense uh, city. Uh, uh, so they, uh, apparently there was a private ownership of immobility uh, here. And we recognize in many places that houses were divided or something was uh, sold from one neighbor to another neighbor or the uh, uh, shops attached to the house were given for rent to some uh, um, uh, and above the streets, which are very narrow streets. Uh, there were walls and above walls was the upper floor of the houses, like in some modern cities of Near East, Sabat as it is called. But the, uh, but, uh, but, but the squares we know is only the only Temenoi of the temples, quite of course. A bazaar on the area 26, excavated by Valentina Raspopova with many workshops attached to it, number 53, and also a kind of a bazaar outside the uh, city wall, which was excavated by Kole uh, Savani in 1980s. Here we see a relatively big uh, open space inside the city, which is an unusual feature. And, and here we have the trace of only one uh, of only one um, workshop attached to it, unlike the main uh, bazaar, unlike the main baza bazaar. And now oh, uh, a little bit about the sector uh, 26 which has been excavated until 2016 by Sharov Kurbanov. So here I'm parasitizing on his results. Uh, uh, the southern part of the, uh, of, uh, the sector, uh, 65 uh, rooms, uh, which can be divided into seven complexes, uh, which date from the seventh century to after 750. Uh, 
The earliest ones are the granaries attached to the city wall. Probably they were not part of the households, but rather uh, element of economy of the defenders of the site. And we see here in many cases, two story rooms, uh, the traces of second and even third floor and also a ground floor. So here it is a rich household, a rich area with uh, wall paintings, with wood carvings and other interesting uh, finds. Uh, uh, we see that it was quite high. And not surprisingly, we see here a number of elevations to the upper floor, what is called in Russian uh, 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 archaeology pandus, which actually it means ramp, but sometimes they are winding ramps, sometimes they are winding staircases. It depends on the quality of them. And so in the last minutes, do I have a couple of minutes? Uh, uh, well, let's hope so. I will speak a little uh, yes, bit about, you, you, sure. uh, uh, and I'll take a little Yes, I'll take a liberty to speak a little bit about uh, these uh, panduses. Uh, so uh, I like them very much. So they are uh, very nice to excavate. There is not much soil to be removed from there. Almost every brick we can find there is meaningful and we need to take care about every brick and to lick the bricks uh, to say, and so it is a kind of meditative process. And moreover, it is uh, small rooms, rather relatively deep, and there is much shadow in them. So it's a great luck to have uh, pandus to excavate it. This, uh, these uh, winding staircases are, of course, not a unique feature of uh, Sogdian architecture. Um, for example, this is a winding staircase at Khali Dukhtar in Fars, the palace of Arbashir, early third, early third century CE. And interestingly, so I should show here also the photo of the dome from this magnificent uh, 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 castle. Uh, it is made of stone. It is not mud brick architecture, but some elements are similar. So in the when making dome, the Sasanian architects use squinches. When making uh, uh, these uh, winding staircases, they did not use squinches, so they used the lower arch at the end of each march and then attached the next, uh, uh, the next line of ceiling to the end. So in Panjakant, at least, we don't have any clear example of, uh, 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 of domes, but in, uh, uh, in these panduses, in ramps, we see normally squinches. So they are known from uh, different places in Sogdiana as well, especially from the uh, castles, from the citadels, one is our fresh excavations at Hisarak Citadel. Two, it's not complete by now. Or another is a very interesting, rounded, very well preserved uh, uh, ramp at Chilhujra site at Charistan Oasis. So last time I was there in the company of Franz Brenne, and when he came there, he, he said, I feel a Soviet will come to meet me in this ramp. Uh, it was really fantastically well preserved. Uh, some ramps have been excavated at Afrasia, but the preservation does not uh, is not uh, 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 very very good. But still, we know uh, we notice them in the city, not in the castle in Samarkand, at the capital of Sogdiana. And several have been excavated at uh, Sanjarsha in the neighborhood of Panjakan by uh, Gerd Grop and Sharov Kurbanov in early 2000 something and uh, by uh, uh, Michael Schenker and Sharov Kurbanov in the latest years. These ramps are quite similar to Panjakan ones. And so uh, we can uh, formulate the rules of a standard ramp or pandus. So it is an almost square space 
as we call in Russian, pod quadrat. So it's not in Russian. In Russian, you cannot say pod quadrat. If somebody says pod quadrat, it means archaeologist. Pod quadrat means square, but not exactly square. Uh, uh, so this almost square space, side about two and a half meters, there are thick outer walls made of paksa, rammed earth, or mud bricks. So mud bricks can be attached to paksa or interchanged with paksa with rammed earth. Uh, uh, so paksa, rammed earth, cheap version. Uh, uh, the central pillar is usually made of mud brick. The side is about one meter, it's quite huge. So there are squinches or trumps at the corners of the space. And there are slanting walls of slanting sim segments. They are of complete half size or sometimes even trapezoid mud bricks. So actually all the panjacant is of the mud bricks of the same type. It's uh, approximately 15, 25 and 10 centimeters. But here we encounter some trapezoid mud bricks. Uh, uh, so there are floors also made of mud bricks with loose plaster. They, and there is no wood, there is no stone. Uh, sometimes it's covered with pottery, but not very often. And of course, the stairs with the course of time erased, and so it appears completely like a pandus or uh, 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 without stairs. Uh, and there are arched entrances to the ground floor, to mezzanine and to the top. The top is not uh, survived. And there are uh, entrances or uh, some storage facilities under the uh, ramp. So these are some examples, especially of the last years of excavations, uh, the plan and the views of a ramp not best survived in a uh, uh, sector uh, six uh, north. Uh, so since it is not well preserved, we can recognize this structure from here. Yeah, this is a ramp in uh, uh, in sector uh, twenty six. Initially, it was uh, the uh, there was a ceiling on it, but later it collapsed, and so it made it possible to make photo of it. So you can see the entrance uh, to the from the ground floor at the uh, upper side and in front, you see the entrance to the mezzanine of the neighboring room. And so this is how it looks uh, when uh, better preserved in uh, sector 11 uh, east with uh, walls and uh, squinches. So this is how squinches are made. They're made of bricks, of parts of bricks. And we see some interesting features, how uh, the vault going in one direction is interchanging with the vault uh, going in uh, uh, another uh, direction. Uh, and the walls themselves, which are made of bricks, sometimes fragmented bricks. And the one to the on the left slide, if in fact, there we had some uh, bricks of trapezoid shape, which is of course easier for uh, making uh, arches and walls. And the entrance uh, to the mezzanine is at the top of the left slide and below it is a, so, so, so to say cupboard under the uh, pandus. And another option is that under the uh, Pandos under the ramp, there is sometimes very, very small, sometimes very, very um, uh, 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 sublime uh, uh, entrance to another room, like here in sector six uh, north. And uh, so there are the storage uh, uh, facilities of, often under the uh, 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 under the ramp, under the pandos. So we see two examples of it. Uh, what comes to mind immediately is the cupboard where Harry Potter used to live with his aunt and uncle. So it is the same structure, but we don't see that somebody was living there. It was mostly used for uh, storage. Uh, apart from uh, 
ramps, there were other models of, of winding ramps. There were other models of going to the upper floor. So there were straight staircases. This is the one excavated in 2018 at the sector 30 uh, in this um, triangular shaped room, which was dictated by the specific shape of the outer wall of the um, block. Uh, and uh, another uh, straight staircase also of the recent years in uh, uh, sector 11 East, which is not very well preserved. And under it is a passage or a cupboard. So we are not sure because it's a bit risky to excavate farther there. And I don't want to destroy the uh, uh, top myself. So actually when we go into this uh, uh, under preserved uh, ceiling, it is uh, somewhat risky, but actually the dogs feel it very well. So there are plenty of dogs here, there, and when we give water to a dog under this uh, um, under this roof, under this wall, if the dog agrees and drinks water there, it means that the dog doesn't feel any danger. If the if the dog does not, it's better not to dig here and to make some other efforts. Uh, and there is and, 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 and another feature which we have, I'm almost complete, I'm almost uh, finishing, uh, are the uh, composite winding uh, staircases. One is in sector 26 north, when we see, when we recognize one uh, march of the staircase, which leads into nothing. And so probably there was another march which was based on the uh, uh, wooden uh, pillars. We are more sure about it in the uh, uh, room uh, 16, uh, sector uh, 11, when we see the elevation of pandus, a normal pandus, which interrupts immediately on the lower uh, uh, left slide, you see it clearly. And there is a room underneath. So what was the reason? If you look up a right slide and lower light slide, a slide, you can recognize the protrusions for wooden beams. So there were wooden beams next to this uh, uh, ramp, which actually led to the entrance to the mezzanine, to the middle uh, floor of, of the house. So initially it is a mud brick construction and then it continues as a wooden um, as a wooden staircase which is not um, a very unusual feature. And so find the final uh, uh, pandos I'm going to show you. It's not complete. The excavations are ongoing. It's room nine in sector six north. Uh, which is uh, in two directions. One direction is to, uh, to your uh, uh, right, another to your uh, top and uh, left. And it's quite interesting that you see in the lower uh, right slide, the two sides of the, of the vault do not correspond to one another. So one side is clearly lower than the other. So there was not much destruction in that. We cannot say that it, uh, fell down. How could it happen? I think the reason is that uh, the uh, uh, that, that the uh, uh, vault was not perpendicular to the walls, but it was at some angle. So it was going to the uh, 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 to, 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 from from uh, uh, north. Uh, 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 from northeast to southwest. So it was not perpendicular and that is why the height of the walls is different. So it shows that uh, Sogdians, people in Panjakant in many other cities, but not in all. So Paikant, for example, is totally one uh, story uh, city. Even walls are not attested uh, there. But in Panjakant, in Sanjar Shah at Afrasiap and in probably at the other side, they made very rather complicated uh, constructions for, uh, uh, for, for, for uh, uh, ramps and also for many other uh, purposes. So many of the things I showed to you are still ongoing. 
now and we hope to resume our excavations uh, very soon. Uh, and one of the features which we would like to examine in the close future is a, a big uh, round at the bottom. So I noticed it on the old aerial photo when I was working on the nominations here for Panjikan for, uh, for UNESCO World Heritage List. Uh, so it looks like a street with some houses at two sides of it outside the Shari style. So it would be very interesting to learn what was it, what is antiquity of that thing from the surface. It's looked like a Rabat, like a Rabad, like a suburb of a early Islamic city which is not known in pre-Islamic Central Asia. So if it is like that, it would be a very interesting result. But of course, we are ready to see any other different solution. So thank you very much for your attention. And once again, I thank the members of our team who worked hard to gain the materials which were uh, which I presented here for you today. Thank you very much for your attention.